Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. There is no other. There is none like him. Nothing compares to the promises we have in him. So why don't we get in him and stay in him? Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to uh, Galatians chapter 6. Get us going. Glad that you're here with us this morning. They already said it, but uh, glad to have Hollywood here this morning. Yeah, give him a round of applause. Been blessed to know Hollywood for a long time and always so many things I like about Hollywood. He's, he's done a lot for me personally, my worship of the Lord. He's invested in me. Man, it seems like I cry every time you come. I get around you, you old grizzly bear. But one of my favorite things personally about Hollywood is he has a big voice. I don't know if you noticed that or not. But he's got a big voice, and so I can sing really loud, and I can hide in his voice. And it sounds really good until it gets quieter. Anyway, Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to just read a few verses. Start in verse 7. Verse 7, Galatians chapter 6. It says this. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also Reap, For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap cor corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. Pray with me. Father, we love you. I just pray, Father, that as we have sowed in worship to you today that you would move in this place, that you would send your spirit, that your word would come alive, that you would fill us up. God, if we're honest, Lord, I just say this as head of this house, Father, that we are bankrupt. We come empty today, and we ask, God, that you would fill us up. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. So uh, uh, we're going to continue. We started last week or so talking about winning relationships. Anybody need a little help in your relationships sometimes? Oh, if you don't admit it, well, that's okay. We all do. We may have good relationships, but we can always do a little bit better. We started talking about winning relationships and how important they are for us to, so to speak, win in life, to fulfill God's plan for our life, for us to walk in his purposes. It happens when we have winning relationships. Now, I want to be real honest with you because I know that you, a lot of you are like me and we act like we've got good relationships. But in all actuality, a lot of our relationships are based on stuff that are not beneficial for our life. They don't help us to get where God's called us to be. But but yet we're acting like our relationships are all great. The reality is we need healthy relationships. We need relationships where God is in the middle of them so that we will help us be beneficial for us to get where God's calling us to get to. So last week we talked about number one thing that we need to do is we need to love ourselves, to love ourselves in a healthy way. A lot of times we're damaged from the past, we're damaged from choices that we make, and so we're damaged on the inside, and so we're trying to live every relationship based on brokenness that I have in me. But we understand that we can love ourselves even though we've messed up, even though we've been wronged, even though we've been through things, we can love ourselves because God loved us. He wants us to be whole. He wants us to to know that he approves of us, that he's ready to give us a new beginning and a new start, and it's okay to love ourselves. So many times we have low self-esteem, nobody likes me, I'm not good enough, I don't fit in, I'm too screwed up, I'm not good, I'm too, I'm too fat, I'm too thin, I'm too funny looking, I'm too, all of those things, doesn't matter. We need to know that God loves us. If God be for us, then who shall be against us? Quit listening to the voices in the world and listen to the Father's voice who says, You are my beloved. You are my son. You are my daughter. I've called you to be in the family of God. We have to love ourselves. Somebody say, love yourself. So that we can properly then enter into healthy, winning relationships. We simply have to be better at relationships. Relationships are of utmost importance. They're utmost importance to God. We can, and, and, uh, and for us to be, it's, it's our strongest weapon is relationships in advancing the kingdom of God. Some of us think it's by our knowledge. Some of us think it's by our skill or our ability. Can I tell you that if you don't have good relationships with the people that you do life with and the people that you worship with, God is not going to move in your midst. 
When we get healthy in our relationships, healthy in our congregation, healthy in our families, then the world is going to want to hear what we have to say. But when they don't see healthy relationships, they're not going to want to be a part of it. It's the strongest message we have. So today we're going to discuss a little bit to talk about investing, depositing into other people. Being a giver and not a taker. How many of you know this? The world's full of takers. They're going to take, take, take. It don't matter if it's from the government or it's from mom and dad or it's from the co-workers or it's cheating on our punch cards or whatever it is. The world's full of takers and we're lacking in giving. And so the few givers that there is have given out and they're bankrupt. We're going to talk today a little bit about giving and de or depositing or investing in other people. There are many treasures in life. There are many treasures. There are many things. There's money. There's fame. There's prestige. There's fortune. There's possession. There's home. There's job. There's church. There's relationships. This is what I believe to be true, that the relationships are the most important treasure that we have on this earth. That's why, why we see the importance that God places on it. When he say the, the greatest commandment is to, they both deal with relationships. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Both the first two greatest commandments by God is to have relationships that are good. Relationship with God, relationship with people. By the way, do you know this? Relationships are the only thing that's eternal. Nothing else is going to go with you. It's only relationships. So great winning relationships are this. They're beneficial and they're life-giving. They're beneficial and they're life-giving. You know what they do? They make us feel like winners. They make us feel better than we are sometimes. They make other people feel better than they are. Healthy winning relationships. We're around people that are for us and not against us. We're around people that are pulling for us. They're helping us. They're praying for us. They're believing in us when we don't believe in ourselves. Amen? They help us. So here's my question. Are your relationships that you're in, are they beneficial? Are they life-giving? Are they making both you and other people win in life? Are they making, are they making all, everybody better? You see, the reality is this. We, you all know this. This is nothing is new. This is all simple stuff. People, we can have everything in life. We can have the stuff, we can have the girl, we can have the car, we can have the money, we can have success, we can have it, we can have it, we can have it. But without meaningful, healthy relationships, over time, we're going to be empty. We're going to be depressed. We're going to be wondering what's going on. We've got everything. How many of you know somebody that's got everything? Their life looks like a picture in a magazine. We think that they got it all, but yet they're miserable. They deal with depression. We find out their marriage is in shambles. It's falling apart. Why? Because we don't have healthy relationships. The very thing that we have to have to sustain our life, to give us purpose, to give us fulfillment, to help us walk this thing out. It's the very thing that we need the most, and so many times we neglect it. So I was thinking this week, and I remember uh, when I was about 10 years old, my parents helped me start my first bank account. See, I, was, I, was, I had started working a little bit and had me a little Coke money, and I was going to the little junior rodeos and all these functions, and, and so I'd get a little money, and, and so they said, okay, it's time for you to understand the responsibility. So we set up this little, little checking account, you know? And so I had like $200, you know, put in this, this little account. And so I had this in my mindset, man. I got these little checks and, they, and I can sign them. And they, they say, you got to sign this and send it in. So I had it in my mind that now I can go and I can enter rodeos and I can buy some stuff that I really been needing that mom and dad didn't want to get me. And now I'm going to do this thing. But I learned real quick that we can only spend what we have in the account. And when we spend more than we have in the account, we're going to get in a bind. Amen? Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> the reality is this is where I'm going. We have to make deposits. Somebody say deposits. We have to make deposits. Everything in life. We can have good stuff. We can have possessions. We can have a job. We can have money. We can have whatever it is. We can have a nice home. The reality is we have to keep depositing. We have to keep investing in those things to keep them flourishing. It's the same way with winning relationships. When we have a good relationship, we just can't say, well, that's a good relationship. Or I've got a good relationship there, so I'm done investing. No, if we want to keep it healthy, if we want to keep it good, if we want 
to keep being blessed by that, then we have to keep investing in it. I want to share something with you that I'm still learning. Maybe this will make sense. It has to me in my life. But every relationship that we have, they can be different, but they're much the same. Every relationship that we have, it's like a little bank account. And there's, there's this little account in it. And I can deposit into this account. And as long as there's something in this account, that relationship has something to draw from. But the moment this account and this relationship gets empty, the relationship becomes bankrupt. And I no longer have anything to draw from in that account. Does that make sense to you? Jesus says it like this. In Acts 20, verse 35, it says, The Lord Jesus, he himself said this, It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. We've all heard that statement. It blesses us to give in every area. This is a principle of the kingdom of God. It's better to give give than it is to receive. Yet with worldly thinking, we say, yeah, I know that. I get the thought. I get the mindset. But here's what we say. I would still rather receive. I still want to be blessed. I still want the better paycheck. I still want the better job. I still want to win this thing over my brothers and sisters because it was, we already know that the world is full of takers and I don't want to go off because I could spend a long time hammering about how the world is full of takers. Relationships are full of takers. It's not hard to see when you see a couple and you get to know them that one of them is taking more than they're giving and the other one's depleted and they're wore out and they're depressed and they're down and they're out and they never feel good and then all this stuff and you begin to realize that one of them is taking more than they're giving that's the way life is and the count begins to run low but here listen what jesus was saying in this scripture when he said it's better to give than to receive what he's saying is this in this context it's you're better off making deposits into the account than you are making withdrawals Your account's going to get bigger. Your account's going to get fuller the more deposits that you are making. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. It says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. He's saying invest in people. Invest in each other. Build each other up. That's what church is about coming together. It's not just about singing or to be seen or to feel better. But it's also about investing in each other. It's about building each other up. So many times we're like, well, I'm better than them. So I'm not going to sit with them. And I'm not going to talk to them. No, he's saying you need to come and you need to build some people up. Not so that you'll be higher than everybody else. But so that everybody else will get to be raising up to where you're at. Does that make sense? Invest in people. 1 Corinthians 14, 12, talking about the body of Christ and he's talking about spiritual gifts and we went through the series about the promise of the Father and he says this, he says, some of you are wanting to excel in spiritual gifts and excel in those things, but he said rather this, he says, excel in the gifts that build people up, that helps them to get to where you are. Invest in people. Somebody say invest. Invest in people to encourage and strengthen them. As well as putting equity into your relationship with them. Y'all know my wife, Tessa, right? Mm. I want to say this. My wife drives me nuts sometimes. I just had had to get that off my chest. Confession is good. But here's the reality. She has great equity in our relationship. She has great equity with me because there's a lot of different things, but we can go way back to about 20 years ago at a point in my life where I was down and out, where I was not good, where I was in a dark place, where I couldn't live and I couldn't make it and I didn't know what was going to go on. And you know what she did? She invested in me. She stuck with me. She believed in me. She prayed for me. She stood by me. And I made some stupid decisions along the way. And she kept investing in me. And so she's got this huge chunk of, I'm not going to tell her how much, but she's got some still left. It's running lower than it used to be. But she ha- that's just an example of equity. When people do things for us, Hollywood has equity with me. 
Because we've been through some stuff together. And I've seen him battle. And I've seen him, how he goes at worship. And I've seen how he's encouraged me in my life. And so we've got equity. It's the same way with many of you. you we have equity together. Because we've done some things in life together. So anyway, we just need to understand that this is a kingdom principle. Investing, giving is better than receiving. It applies to all relationships. It applies greatly. Galatians 6, 7, the scripture that we started with today. It says, do not, do not. Listen to this scripture. Do not be deceived. Don't let the enemy, don't let the world, don't let your own thinking. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. This is his principle. This is what works. A man reaps what he sows. We reap what we sow. We do. We're going to get it back. It's coming back at us. So we're going to look at some practical ways today. Very simple. But ways to invest or deposit into people. Number one is this. I got six of them so you can count. You'll know where we're at. Number one is this. Give people your love. Give people your time. You know what? Sure, it can be good to give people gifts. That's, that's good. We can give them a little money along the way. That's, that's fun to make them feel special. But here's the real question. Do we give them our love and our time? Do we give people our time? Time is one of the, I don't know about you, but time is one of the most precious things that we have. Amen? We can make more money, but we ain't making no more time. We have a certain amount of time with our children, and then boom, it's gone. They're out of here. We've got this much time. We have a window when we meet certain people. We've got a small window, and when it closes, it's gone. I don't know about you, but I'll get to that in a minute, but I battle with time, my time. We can't squeeze a whole lot of love and value and communicate that with somebody in just a few minutes every once in a while. We do this with relationships. Well, I saw them the other day. I let them know that one time how I really feel about them. So people, here's the point. People are going to know how really where our value is, what we really love by where we spend our time. So you can start thinking about it. You can calculate it this week. And you can see where you spend your time. You can see where you spend your time. And you'll find out what you value. And you know what that old excuse? We, we've all used it. Most of all of us guys at one time or another. We're somewhere where we shouldn't be. We're somewhere that's other than where somebody wants us to be. And, and, and so then she says, where you been? Well, this is where I've been. I'm be honest with you. But you know, that's really not important to me. I really don't care about that. You know what? That's going to work initially. But if we keep coming home saying the same old thing, that, well, this is not really important to me. But over time, where we spend our time and where we is going to show where we value, and it's not going to work forever. As I said, this is a battle for me. Like many of you, we're pulled in different ways. And I've got church over here, and I've got people that, that are depending on me and, 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 and things that I need to do, which I'm glad to do them. But then I've got home life, and I've got a family, and we've got ball games, and we've got one in college now. And then I've got my work at home where I help my mom and dad and we raise cattle and we bail hay and we, we do all these things. And I just, I struggle with, with time, time management. It's hard for me to schedule because when you're at agriculture, there's not a time clock on when things are going to happen out there. You know what I'm talking about? When equipment's going to go down, when cattle are going to do this, when the hay needs to be cut, when all this stuff, there's not a, not a time calendar. And sometimes I have people say, well, you, if you're called the ministry and the Lord's doing great things, and why don't you just turn to an evangelist? And why don't you go do these things? You have these opportunities. Or why don't you spend every last moment at the church house? Why don't you just completely do that? And I'll tell you why. Because very early on in my ministry, well, before I was in ministry, we're all in ministry, but before I'd even started serving at a local church and God had started giving me opportunities and the Lord told me this. He said, Carter, I'm going to tell you something. He said, your family is your first ministry. He told me that he made it very clear. You can go and you can lead the multitudes to Christ and you can become somebody and you can do some stuff and you can do all that stuff. He said, but let me tell you, if your ministry with your family fails, then none of that other stuff's going to be credited to you. And sometimes we forget these things because we're so focused on being busy and doing all these other things. 
Number two is this. I got to go. When we're investing in people, can I say this? Do something different. Surprise people. Do things for people with no reason. Don't wait until someone is in dire need or till a relationship is bankrupt and it's down and out. And all of a sudden, you, we're going to try to make up for it. And we're going to show up when they're hurting and when they're really in a bind. Sometimes, listen, we ought to just do things. We ought to just invest in somebody when they're not expecting it and just show up or send them a letter instead of sending them a text. Just show up with flowers for your wife when she's not expecting it. Just do something for somebody. And check this out. When they ask you, what in the world are you doing? Why did you do that for me? You know what? Tell them. Tell them because my pastor told me. No, don't tell them that. No, you tell them this. Because I love you. And I value you. And I want to invest in you. And see what happens. When we invest in people. A surprise thing. You know what it is? This is agape love. Amen. Agape love is loving for no reason. It's giving without expectation. I'm just loving you with this. How many of you were surprised? Maybe I'm the only one. You were jacked up, messed up, trapped, jammed up, no way out. And you found out that God loves you. You realize that when he did this on the cross, man, he was saying, I love you. I'm not against you. I poured out my blood for you so that you can be renewed. I accept you. Come to me. All you who are weary. It's agape love. And you're like, wow. Wow. Is this for real? I've heard the story, but I never realized that was for me. I thought it was for them that dressed a certain way. Didn't speak in church. Didn't get up in the middle of service. Sure didn't. You know what I mean? (laughs) No, it's for you. It's agape love. It's without expectation. And it says this, I'm doing this for you, but check it out. You don't owe me nothing. You don't have to pay me back. Oh, man. What if we took our wives out, did something special, our romanced our ladies, but then we said, I don't even expect anything when we get home. I just love you. I just value you. Some of you is going to get that later on. We're investing. Maybe that wasn't good. Shouldn't have said that. Check it out. Romans 5, 8. This is a description. God demonstrates his love, his own love for us in this while we were still yet sinners. He gave his son. Jesus died for us. A shock. We didn't know it was coming. We didn't realize it. I just want to say this and I'll move on. But su- these, these little surprise deposits that are not expected and they're maybe not even thought of as needed, they build up big chunks in your relational checking account, so to speak. Number three is this. Deposit or invest regularly. How do I know? I'll tell you. The more important the relationship, the more regularly you need to deposit. In other words, like our marriage and our kids, they need depositing every day. Every day. Somebody's trying to get our spouse's attention. The world's trying to get it. Every day at the school, on the television, on everything in life, somebody's trying to get our kids' attention. And they're trying to make investments and they're putting thoughts in their head. Every day we need to be investing in those that are closest to us. Because check this out. If I'm not investing in my kids and and, and, and in my spouse, then when that when that account begins to get a little bit depleted, you know what they're going to do? They're going to start looking to fill it somewhere else. That's when a marriage turns into an adulterous affair. That's when our children begin to look to sex, drugs, and worldly things to put something into this account that's going to fill me up, that's going to try to satisfy me. We have to invest what Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Every day, Lord, we need a deposit from you. Every day, those that are important to us, we need to be depositing in, in them. Remember, relationships have these equity accounts, and we're doing fine until they run out. Until they run out. Let me tell you something. You may say this. You may say, you know what, mister, I, in, I feel like I invest. I feel like I do, and I really don't see that much good coming out of it. Here, let me put you on a little secret. Invest a little bit more. Did you know that just a little bit more can make a big return? A big difference in the return. Check this out. You're going to love this. We're doing math today. Did you get her, Michael? You say, I'm investing. 
But I want you to see the difference. You say, I'm investing three times, three amounts every day. So I'm going to do this for five days. Three, three, three. It's 243. If I'll up it just a little bit, if I'll up it to four, four over five days equals 1,024. That is over a 400% increase return upon my investment. Now that you say, may say, well, that sounds silly. I'll just encourage you to commit. This is what we do. We'll invest a little bit more. We'll invest everything we have in one day, but then we don't do it the rest of the week. If we'll get consistent on doing just a little bit more, It'll be a greater increase that will return back to us. Sometimes we're we're right there on the edge. And if we'll just go in a little bit more, it'll do more than we could ask, think, or imagine. Number four is this. Sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. This is unpopular in our culture, a culture of consumers. We don't want to sacrifice. Everything is about how is it going to bless me? How's this church going to fill my needs? How are they going to impress me, approve, make me love them? No. It's about sacrifice. This is a biblical principle that not many practice anymore. Sacrifice means this. It means to give up something of great value or significant importance to me on behalf of somebody else. It shows people. The ultimate, this is the ultimate proof of our love. This is the ultimate proof of where we have our value to God. When we, let me ask you this. How many of you have sacrificed, really sacrificed anything to God? We just accept what Jesus did. We just accept it. Do we ever sacrifice? Do we ever begin to turn away from stuff that's like, you're this important to me that I'm going to get rid of this stuff so that I can serve you more correctly? Or better yet, are we sacrificing for people around us to let them know what we think? It shows people that we value them. We value our relationship with them more than our habits, more than my own desires, more than my own what I want to do. I value them. With this mindset, let's look at Luke 9, 24. It says, for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me will save it. You see, we've heard this scripture, but we we begin to think about how we're investing with people. If I'm a taker and I'm making it all about me, I'm trying to save my life. I'm trying to protect myself. But Jesus says, if you will give it away and you'll start investing and making deposits in to other people, you're actually going to save your life. Your life is going to be better with this way than it is if it's going to be depleted when you're trying to get it for yourself. Jesus, think about it. Jesus. Gave his life as a deposit for us. He deposited into our life value. He deposited into our life love. He deposited into our life the Holy Spirit. Once we accept him and receive it. Are we sacrificing? Are we willing? Luke 9, 23, Jesus said it like this. If anyone, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself. Sacrifice. He must deny himself and take up his cross Daily, that's regularly, sacrifice, daily. And then he can come follow me. It, listen, at times we're gonna, you and I are going to have to make tough decisions. We're going to have to make tough decisions to make sure that those people that are around us, those relationships, we're going to have to make tough decisions to make sure that they know that we value them more than some of this other stuff. Number six. Are you serious about sacrifice? Are we? Or is this just a church word? Sacrifice. I think about all the things that I sacrificed for before I was born again, before I really felt the Lord's call. I think about how I lived, and this is just a life theory that just so happened I got lucky and it works for the kingdom of God, but this was always my theory. Give everything you've got. Nobody's going to work harder than me. Nobody's going to try harder. They may be better. They may be more talented. They may do whatever. But nobody's going to try harder than me. And that was because one time when I was a kid, I got told that I wasn't trying hard. But that was my mindset. 
And you know, it worked pretty good. But how much more does it work in the kingdom of God if we'll sell out for the kingdom of God and say, I'm going to give this thing all I've got because Jesus gave it all for me. And there may be churches that are better and there may be better preachers and there may be a better song service and they may be better looking. They may be better whatever. But I'm telling you, this: what if we just said, I'm going to give it all I got. It may not be very good, but I'm laying it all on the floor. When I lay down at night, I want to be give out where I can just pass out when I hit the pillow. Amen. Are y'all okay? <laughs> Number six is this. I already said that. Place God. This goes back to last week, but place God first in your own life. This is a must because my relationships are going to struggle. And if I don't have God first in my own life, Jesus said it like this in Matthew 6, 33, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first God, his righteousness. Then all this other stuff will be taken care of. He says, tend to you, man. Make sure God's first in your life. It's the same with Matthew 22, 38 and 39. The greatest commandment again, love the Lord your God first and then love your neighbor as yourself. We got to have God first. This enables us or frees me to love, to value and to invest in others. Because I'm right with God and I'm hearing his voice. Because I, everything that we do, everything that I do, good or bad, flows out of where I'm at in my relationship with the Father. When my relationship with the Father's good, I'm going to love everybody and I'm going to help people and I'm going to be patient and I'm going to be loving and I'm going to be forgiving. But when I'm not right with God or I'm not seeking Him first or I get my eyes off the cross and I start seeing some stuff I want to do, then I'm not going to really have time for you and I'm not feeling all that forgive me. I'm a little bit irritated right now. And I, are you, make, you see what I'm saying? But when I'm in a good place and I'm healthy, it allows me then to do the second part, to love other people. We have to make sure that our relationship personally is right first so that my, it will empower me by the Holy Spirit to share and then to encourage and invest properly into others. Because we've all done this. We're going to try to fix our relationship. Or we see somebody over here that, that, that's struggling or messed up. And so we're going to try to fix them. But the problem is we don't go into those things with God in mind. We're trying to do it in our own strength instead of through the filter of God. We have to make sure that we're seeking God first and then work and invest on others. So I'm done. I got one more point. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Don't say that. The last one is this. Start investing now. This is not a fiery message. This is not really my style, so to speak. But this is a message that will change our relationships. That it will change us. That it will help us. If we will embrace it and understand how important relationships are. So start investing now. Because this is what we do. We hear stuff and, and we put so many things off. Until. Well, until we don't do it. It's the same with relationships. You're right. I should do that. I should try that. And then we never do it. What if we started today? I would encourage this. Pray. Begin praying. You, some of you already know without praying even. Which, what, what people? Make a list. What people do I need to invest in this week? What people do I need to put some equity? Build some equity in this account so that this, this relationship will not become bankrupt. Luke 6, 38 says this. Give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure. Press down, shaken together. For with whatever measure you give, it shall be returned. What if I would have everyone investing, everyone treasuring in each other, depositing into each other, into each other's life. Then those people begin depositing back into our life. And we all, instead of being depleted, we all get our accounts built up. And what if a church didn't have a handful of people who's got this big account and the 85% of people who comes depleted and they're give out and they're angry and they're depressed and they, they don't know how they're going to make it and they feel empty. And if we would all begin investing in each other, but we have to connect and we have to allow people and we have to be willing and we have to share life. We can't come in isolation. But what if we all did it? 
What would it look like? And then we would have enough, not just for me, but it would begin overflowing down Haley Street. And it would begin overflowing over their own lake air and run down the hill. And just somebody might step out of their house and get a little bit of it on them. But the point is we'd have some to take with us from this place. And we would continue to invest. And every time we came here, we got invested a little bit more. And we got a little bit stronger. And we got a little more built up. And then we would continue to go and share it to people who were starving in the world. This will change the world. It'll change our families. It'll change our children, our churches, our relationships. And the reality is we can all do better. So Hollywood come and I'm done. But I ask you to consider. Are you a giver or are you a taker? I mean, I know we all give we all do in different ways, but if you look at yourself honestly, are you a giver or are you a taker to the most important relationships that you have? Sometimes we're giving in other places, but are we investing in those relationships that are closest to us? Are we making deposits? Are we just making withdrawals? Are we building people up? We all need winning, healthy relationships so that we can win in life so that we can make it through the hard times so that we can share the glory in the good times but ultimately so that we can glorify the lord more fully bottom line is how's your relationships that's what this whole thing is about this series this is not about judging this is not about well you're talking to me no this is about all of us because we're in it together listen i'm invested in you man if I wasn't, I'd check out when I didn't, wasn't pleased. We're in this together. And it's about us listening and checking areas where we can do better. How's your relationship with Father God? Is it depleted? Is it empty? Do you feel dry? Do you feel lifeless? Do you feel what's here? Why, why am I even here? Can I encourage you to make a sacrifice? This is simple. As hard as it is for some of us, but we're sitting back here today and you say, well, you're not talking to me because I'm good and I've been to church and I've done all this stuff my whole life. But in this moment, God's saying, I want you to sacrifice and I want to get, get your self-righteous, crusty, dusty up if I'm speaking to you. And I want you to sacrifice by walking to the altar of God and saying, God, I want to be real and I want to be honest because I know I'm hearing that it's all about relationships with you and relationship with others. And I'm willing to come and ask you, God, to begin filling me. So that I can then deposit into others. Pray with me. Father, I love you. I thank you for this day, God. I thank you for wanting relationship with us. And you didn't just tell us that through your word, but you brought it to life and you showed us. You showed us how much you valued us by depositing your son into this earth. He gave everything he had. So, Father, I just pray first for the one that feels depleted, that feels empty. God, I pray that you would begin pouring into them, that the, 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 the floodgates of heaven would begin to open and pour into their heart and pour into their inner man and erase the doubt and erase the low self-esteem and erase the mistakes, God. And you would just begin to pour in your love and the value you have on their life. And for all the rest of us, God, if we're here and we're a little depleted or we realize that, that you, we, we need to do better at invest, investing in our relationships, God, I pray that we would come to you seeking. We would come to you asking, God, who and how do I need to invest so that we can build up our accounts and reap together a greater relationship. Father, we love you. I just pray that you move in this place as we